as a kid, you kind of form the basics, okay, core belief, core, these beliefs, these beliefs, and then what do you do to form more beliefs? You build them off of the original core beliefs, okay? So say you're a kid and the teacher's like, you're stupid. Oh man, they're really certain uh, and congruent when they're saying they have authority, and say the whole classroom's like, ha ha, stupid. You're like, oh, I'm stupid. And say you believe it. You're a kid, you don't know any better. You're stupid, and this is what you deserve in life, not more. Now, based on that core belief, what's going to then happen, instead of going from zero to form the next belief, you're going to be like, well, since I'm stupid, how does this play with me being stupid? Right? So I'm stupid becomes a foundation for new beliefs. Oh, this happened because I'm stupid, and this because I'm stupid. This is this whole tree built on I'm stupid. Right? If you succeed at something and say, as a kid, your best friend gets jealous and you lose your friend, you might think, oh man, if I succeed, then I'm alone and I lose my friends. And that becomes a belief. And then you form new things on that. If you look at your parents' relationship and they fight a lot, you're like, love equals fighting. And then you build new beliefs on that. So it's like this whole tree. Now here's how this runs us. One, we never stop and examine this. We literally form this during our childhood. Like we don't know any better and we keep assuming it's true and acting in a congruent way to this into our adulthood. We're never like, wait a minute, where did all this programming come from? Is it accurate? We never do it. And not only that, but we also have a lot of resistance to identifying these core beliefs, because if this, it's, it's so risky, because we believe that if this is inaccurate, say this is wrong, then what happens to the whole building, the whole tree, the, whole, the foundation's wrong? It crumbles. And all your assumptions about the world or even who you are are gone. And then you're left with the big unknown. Who am I? It feels like you're dying, right? So these are core beliefs, but we also have a core identity. This is me, and this is how I relate to the world. And in that identity, once more, there's ceilings of success, who we think we are, um, one thing I've talked about in many videos you might have heard me uh, mention before is if you could pick a movie character that you resonate with the most, who would you be? <laughs> it's like Tony Stark. <laughs> no, it's true. It's like if you think about it, like what movie character do you really resonate with? Not the one you want to be, the one that's you. Are you the hero? Are you the sidekick who's always helping others? Are you the bad guy? Are you the loser? Are you the guy in the background no notices? Are you, this is a common one, are you Rocky, right? No. The, the person, the underdog who defies the odds. This is, by, by the way, crazy. We all have this because there's so much glory. You see it, like, you know, the people know, like, so many movies. The hero, no one really believes in them. And then that hero rises up and overcomes all these challenges. And it blows our mind. And we're like, wow, that's glorious. And at the end, Everyone acknowledges that hero and it's just glorious. And it's the challenge that that hero overcame that made it so glorious. And it's the fact that no one believed in that hero that made it so glorious. Say that happens, you're like, whoa, I want that. How is that gonna affect your life? Say I come to you and I'm like, hey, here's an amazing opportunity, take it. You're like, well, that's too easy. I don't wanna <laughs> skip to the end, <laughs> right? <laughs> Don't just give it to me. I want the, the obstacle to overcome. And then what happens unconsciously, you start creating obstacles. You make things a lot harder than they need be to stay congruent to that unconscious core identity. One I've had for many years was a self-destructive artist and that pulled me back. Can I be truly successful? No, because then I'm no longer self-destructive. I can't fully allow myself to succeed. Why? to preserve that identity, to stay congruent to that identity. So big takeaway here is any kind of self-sabotage, there is always a payoff. And what you must do whenever you're even procrastinating or putting things off, and don't self-attack over this, by the way. The whole point of doing this audit is to be aware of the truth. It's not to beat yourself up over it. You gotta commit to this, be like, you know what? I'm gonna take a hard look at who I am, what I believe, what's running me, I'm not going to judge myself because this gives me the foundation and now I have the material and what I know what to do with it. Now I can do something. I'm not just blind trying to figure shit out. Okay. So when you self-sabotage, say it's like, do I want to work or Game of Thrones finale? What's the payoff of not working? 
Say you screw something over, you push success away. Why did you secretly like pushing success away? That's the question. Why do I secretly like this? I mean, that's one out of many. There's many, and, and again, this is, I mean, this is what I find really fascinating about this, but, the, the, but what also makes it a lot harder to teach is like, I wish I could just give you the one answer. You wanna know why everyone does this? Because of this one thing. No, it depends on you. We're all so unique, we're way more complex than this, this general answer. And not just that, it also depends on you. So for example, the beliefs you had in the household you grew up in. One person could have grown up believing, as an example, that um, being uh, creative and taking risks is great, that's how you live. Uh, people who don't take risks, you know, they're very boring. People are very uh, logical or even responsible. Those are boring people. And then you're kind of like this, this chaotic, creative person, right? On the other household, they could have been told the opposite. Those creative people, they're just children. They, don't, they won't survive in the world. You want to be mature. You want to be an adult. Da, 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 da. And that's what you believe is good. So it's very much, it, it, there's so many nuances. Only you know what's running you. But with this type of thinking and doing this type of questioning, this type of auditing, you'll be able to identify what's down there.